So, so moving on from vetting, we've looked at this file and let's say we have to go back to the author with things or we're moving on into different stages. We've provided templates um, and that's what you see here under author communications. Um, you know, we provided templates for you to use and, you know, restructure as you see fit based upon uh, whatever you might need. So then that way you have sort of this like set um, well template that says, you know, this is the information that I need to send at this stage because we are human too and we might forget to, you know, send the author X, Y, or Z. Um, you know, so these template emails serve in, in that purpose. We're not going to go over each and every one, but there's one for each stage um, of um, the um, publishing process. We've included these guidelines right at the top. And the number one one is one that I would suggest is to ch set up a time to always and yes, checklists also help you stay on track. Thank you, Carla. Right. Um, if you look at these guidelines, you'll see that the very first one, number one, um, is to set a time every week to check in with your authors, right? This is something that we do um, here. Like we usually use Thursday. So that way if something is going wrong, people do have time to respond. Um, you never want to set up like a Friday, um, you know, check in because when you discover something that needs to be handled and you discover it on Friday, you know, that's not going to be handled until Monday. Um, so uh, especially with time sensitive things, you always want to check in uh, midweek. Uh, again, we use Thursday just because it's, close to Friday and close enough to um, uh, the end of the week so that people would have gotten things done. Um, but you set that time up to like check in uh, with progress. Um, and yes, Karen just noted every Thursday with, uh, with a status report that just says, hey, this is where we're at. This is what I'm doing. This is what I've done. Um, and you can do this even within your team and say like, hey, on Thursday, just let me know where you're at. Um, because then that way, um, you know, if something comes up, we have a rule here at Scribe that, you know, our clients should never have to ask where things are at, right? Because we're always keeping them updated. As project managers, that's our responsibility. And you can do this with your authors. You can have this conversation and you can say like, hey, look, if they're still writing their manuscript, have, you know, on Wednesday, like every Wednesday, give them a call or send them an email if they can't um, always respond and say, hey, just let me know where you're at. And even if it's something simple like, hey, I've just finished chapter four, now you know that they're done with chapter four. You know, it's something, and it it's, keeps things not only um, in order, um, but it keeps things under your control. And then that way it sort of gives an impetus for, you know, the author to finish or whatnot. Um, we heard, I believe it was last week where uh, Carla had that experience where that author was sort of purposely avoiding her because he was ashamed that, or she was ashamed um, that they hadn't done what they needed to do. Right. But that's why we have these status updates so that we can tell them right from the get-go saying, Hey, you know, this is what, like, I'm going to expect something from you. Talk to me. If you, if you can't meet this deadline, then let us know ahead of time. And that's why you have this constant communication and you'll and you're seeing this sort of we're building to this idea that we're constantly communicating um you know with the authors with our teams because as project managers that's what we do right we have to make sure we're on top of the projects that we're handling um and making sure that you know we are, we know where everything is at even if you're not the typesetter it's good to know that where the typesetter is at right even if you're not the editor you know um Right. And exactly. And that way you're not just communicating when there's an issue. And now people don't dread your emails like, oh, dear God, what's happening now? Right. It's rather, hey, you know, I got this email. I see where it's at. I know what I have to respond. And then it's a pleasant back and forth. And when issues do come up, that communication has already been established. Um, I'll give an example. Um, last year, I worked with an author that was very involved with their project and wanted to like be kept up to date all the time. And one of the things that they loved working with us was that we let them do that and we let them like talk. And it wasn't like I was giving him free reign to change things all, all the time. It was having the communication of saying, Hey, this is where your project's at. You know, if you have any questions, let me know. And then if he had questions, he let me know. And that it sort of makes things easier, makes things smoother. And as a project manager, it's that sort of like, you want to grease the wheels, make sure that everything is uh, proceeding as they need to proceed. Um, you'll see that second point there that phone calls are preferable um, to emails. I know that sometimes email is the only way that we can communicate, but um, if you do have the ability to phone or do via like Google Hangouts or anything like that, um, 
I, you should use those methods because it humanizes you to the author, to vendors if you're dealing with a, with a freelancer um, or to whomever else you're dealing with. It's always good to hear somebody's voice because imagine if I would have just at this point just said, hey, look, read this and then backed away and shut off my video and let you read it. You know, that wouldn't really teach you anything and it wouldn't really uh, help you sort of, you know, learn. You probably even see that as dismissive, right? And remember that text communication um, has this issue where if somebody's in a bad mood and they receive an email, how are they going to read it? They're going to read it as if you're in a bad mood. Um, so you don't, you always want to try to communicate as best as possible using the phone, using, you know, whatever technology um, you have available. If email is what you have, then, you know, phrase your emails in a, you know, friendly, nice way um, and avoid any issues um, where people might misinterpret. Uh, sometimes, um, you're short and you don't mean to be short and you don't mean to offend, but it might come off that way. That has happened, I think, to, to us all who have dealt with projects. Um, and so um, here, um, the third point is like when you have to go against something that the author wants, um, you always want to explain your reasoning and make sure that you sort of phrase things in a way that help them see that what you're suggesting, what you're suggesting is actually for the betterment of their work, not uh, for the detriment, right? You are not their enemy. You are their friend. You are trying to get their book, their content out there into as many hands um, as possible. And there are other guidelines there that you are more than welcome to read and take upon yourself. And again, we say this again, these are guidelines. They're not rules. We're not saying do this the scribe way because it's the best way. We've just found that this is the best way for us to communicate with people and to um, not only share um, share in what the author is trying to do. And I think that that's one of the reasons why, like for example, what we're trying to build here works because everybody's trying to get to that same mission, to that same goal. Um, and if we're able to communicate effectively, then you know everything sort of works a lot better than if we're unable to do that. So again, those templates are there for you to use um, as you see fit. Feel free to take them, tear them apart if you need to. Just take snippets if that's what's required. Um, they are there for you to use. Um, we phrase them in ways that are direct, but at the same time, not um, cold or uh, impersonal. Uh, but feel free to add your personal uh, touch uh, to them as you see fit. Do we have any questions or suggestions, uh, concerns about um, author communication or anything, especially when it refers to the ones that you are going to be working with during your projects? I'll give a second whilst we move over here. <laughs> 